yeah, I'm back in the fifth wheel and I'm standing in front of a big empty refrigerator because the day that I came back here, I turned it on and it broke. And the part that I need to fix this is astronomically expensive, but that's not all. On top of that, this bonehead ripped both of the back stabilizing legs off the airstream. So today I'm going to have to deal with repairing both of those things. This is RV life. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV. And yes, I am standing in my fifth wheel. I had to come back to Colorado because I got jury duty. And after that, I have some appointments that are going to keep me here for about a month or two, and then I'm headed for the East Coast. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so, ring the little bell, and you can see me in those travels. But when I came home, I knew that I was going to have to deal with the leg issue on the Airstream. I'm going to tell you about that first, um, because I was a total rook, and I made a rookie move. Uh, I was only in the Airstream for about two months and um, I was fleeing a camping spot where there were some creepers. I'm going to tell you all about it and um, didn't put my back legs up, drove and of course ripped them off. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, I have a fifth wheel. It's been in storage because I used to be a couple and now I'm a solo. So as a solo camper full time, I started heading out in a 16 foot Airstream. Now I've never pulled a trailer and every time I switch rigs, it's like I'm brand new all over again. And that was the case with this rig too. But the reason that I was in such a hurry to pack up camp and leave this camping spot is a funny story. So I'm going to tell you about it. If you're one of my patrons, you heard about all of this in real time and they got the really juicy details, but I'm going to give you the public version <laughs> right here. So Two, three months into my Airstream life, I went down to one of my favorite places to camp. It's called Telephone Cove in Nevada, which is just outside of Laughlin. Now, if you Google Telephone Cove, it's going to take you to the wrong place. Telephone Cove is down this really bumpy road. And once I got down there, I was happy to see that only about a third of the potential camping spots were taken. But the weather was really bad and windy, so I didn't get to sit outside that much and neither did anybody else. And that's probably why it was so empty. Well, one day I go outside on the first good day and there's a couple of dudes next to me, one that has a class A and somebody that was visiting him. And they said, oh, hey, we were wondering, uh, you know, who was in there and you sure do keep to yourself. And I said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and refer to these two guys for the rest of this video as creeper number one and creeper number two. Creeper number one was just, you know, a POS. Creeper number two started to come over to me to warn me about creeper number one. That was the reason in the beginning. But then he just kept showing up and he left for a little bit and he came back and parked right up behind me, like right behind my back window. And he must have knocked on my door four times a day at night um, all the time. And, you know, I give him a pass in some ways, because when I was brand new on the road, I didn't know what camping etiquette was. And um, if you don't know, then here's a word from our sponsor. Hi, this is Robin from Creativity RV. Do you suffer from RV or dysfunction? Well, you're not alone. Many people do, but there is something you can do about it by learning basic RV etiquette. When you're camping, don't leave your trash everywhere. Don't put broken glass and bullets and aluminum cans and dirty diapers. That's right, in the fireplaces. If you're not camping by yourself in the middle of nowhere, be sure to keep your dog on a leash. I don't know you, and you don't know me, and I know you think your dog is friendly, but we don't need to have that discussion if you keep your dog on its leash. If you're boondocking in the middle of nowhere and there's a big wide open space, don't pull right up behind me and be a bumper humper. It's like sitting in a movie theater where all the chairs are empty and you sit right next to me. And if you're in a beautiful space where other people might want to get some sleep at night or look at the stars, don't have so many lights outside your RV that you look like a Walmart parking lot. And this is a big one. Don't go and knock on somebody's door 
unless they're expecting you. I think most of us don't want people to do that even in houses these days. It's a little bit weird. People usually text or they call first. Well, in an RV, you're in this tight little enclosed space. So when somebody just comes up and knocks on your door, I don't know about you, but it makes me jump out of my skin. Plus, if you're going to come over, you're walking right by my window, which is also really disconcerting. Good RV etiquette says that you think about your neighbor's RV with a yard around it, and you don't go in that yard unless you're invited. Wait for people to come outside and then say, hey, neighbor, can I come by and visit? And I bet they say yes. So yeah, I was over the creepers. I was ready to move on. And I knew that if I wasn't all packed up right at dawn, the guy behind me would have seen my lights on he would have run outside and so I packed up the night before and the next morning the only thing that I had to you know pick up I thought <laughs> was my Starlink and you know make sure I was hooked up okay and go and that morning I thought okay Robin slow down you're gonna miss something and I went through my checklist I thought and did everything I needed to do and then right as the sun started to come up I left that camping spot it wasn't until I got to my next destination that was about 20 miles away that I even realized that I had not brought up the back stabilizing legs. My Airstream 16-foot Bambi was attached to my car, and I had only ever put out the legs when I detached from the car. And so in my mind, because I was attached to the car, the legs weren't down. My bad, won't do it again. But I remember when I got to the beach, I was pretty level, but I thought, you know, it's sand here, so maybe I'll just put down the back legs because, you know, then I'd have, you know, the tongue and both sets of tires, and that should be fine. And the Airstream jacks are really tucked up underneath, so when it was dark, I didn't even see them. I did a walk around um, in my bed, so they totally ripped off, and I knew that I was going to have to fix that when I got here. Yesterday, my good friend Paul and I got underneath my rig and really took a good look at these mangled back legs. Each leg has three bolts, and it turns out that one of the legs had a bolt that ripped out of the aluminum that's underneath. And so we're going to have to tap the bolt or go with a bigger bolt or do something that I've never done before. Luckily, I have good friends around here that are going to help me do it. Please let this be the legs because really I think it's weird. It comes from Kimco. Uh-oh. That's not a leg. Hook pad stabilizer. Oh, that looks like a leg. <laughs> you had me nervous there for a sec. You hear what we got? Right. Legs. One leg, ready to go. I didn't realize Camco made these. That's interesting. That's probably going to be, you know, even if my friends install it, you know, without charging me, you know, maybe 500 bucks for the, for the two legs. And while I'm at it, I'm thinking about getting an electric tongue jack because that's the, the harder part to crank. Okay, Wayne's opening the box with my... Oh, look at that. It looks like a... It looks like a electric wing. Does oh, it? No, it's an electric jack. Stand. Well, good. Then I got the right thing, maybe. Yes. Has a fun bag and a little switch. So this thing is only 16 feet long, but I still would prefer not to crank it up and crank it down every time. I'm going to go on the electric route. Now, how's the electric part go? So we're going to run wires and cables back over here to your battery. This will go under and come out right in here. Ooh. I like how this is turning out. So this doesn't have to be in there, but this is a surge protector breaker. That's nice of you. Type thing. Man, it sounded like a mouse trap going off, didn't it? We're almost done. Everybody, the switch here? <laughs> yeah. Goes up. Ooh. Ooh. This switch. Hold on. <laughs> goes down. Oh! Ooh, YouTube, here we go. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Light. Shut up. Camera action. <laughs> Alright, I had to find a hitch with a flat back. So hopefully the propane hood will fit. Survey says. Hey, look at that. I did good. You did excellent. 
Well, sometimes you just have to make lemonade out of those lemons. That's what I tried to do. Come back Wednesday for an all-new video where I'm going to show you my heinously expensive refrigerator repair and the new refrigerator gadget I will not be without in my RV life. If you like this video, I've got hundreds of others in my playlist. I'll see you guys Wednesday and the next Sunday again with an all-new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.